chronic sinusitis is a very common uh, condition affecting millions of people. Um, the sinuses are air-filled spaces in the skull, so both in the forehead, in the cheeks, between the eyes, and further back. Uh, they're normally uh, basically air-filled with a small opening that drains any sort of bacteria or mucus that would build up in the sinuses. And what happens in patients who have chronic sinusitis is those outflow tracts are, are blocked. That can be because of scarring, that be, can be because of polyps, uh, that can be because of just the way that they were born. They're you know, quite small. And uh, when those outflow tracts are blocked, it's, it's basically a plumbing problem. You've got a lot of bacteria and mucus that builds up in these sinuses, and if they can't drain, it's just a cesspool for bacteria, and you just, you're going through these chronic um, uh, courses of antibiotics where you, you take some antibiotics, you feel better, and then you know a few weeks after you stop the antibiotics, the pain, the symptoms come back because you know the, the antibiotics kind of beat down the bacteria, but since the hole is not open, the drainage tract is not open, the sinuses aren't healthy, you just get this, this vicious cycle of antibiotics. And so uh, where sinus surgery comes in is just trying to restore uh, the native Kind of outflow tracts and that's why we call it functional uh, sinus surgery where we're able to just go in open up the native hole generally make it you know two three times larger than um, you know it naturally is but in the same location restoring those those outflow tracts where patients can use uh, nasal irrigation like a neti pot the, the water gets in there washes things out and we can kind of you know um, get the patient back to a normal uh, baseline where they're not needing antibiotics all the time so prior to uh, this new procedure called balloon uh, sinuplasty or balloon uh, sinus dilation, uh, that had to be done in the operating room under general anesthesia. And in those particular cases, we've got you know instruments and drills and things like that to remove bone and 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 reshape, reopen those those outflow tracts. But uh, in the last five or ten years, there's been a development uh, to use uh, balloons over uh, what is effectively kind of a small wire. Uh, so we're able to, uh, under local anesthesia in the office, uh, f establish those those openings by you know feeding a small wire into those 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 normal uh, drainage tracts which are blocked and then inflate a balloon which then uh, is able to restore that drainage pathway get the sinuses healthy again and because there's no general anesthesia the downtime is much less uh, and patients do really well uh, with this particular procedure the studies have shown that the um, the balloon procedure is equivalent to the in the in OR procedure in terms of, of long-term relief. Uh, again, we're able to, to, to reestablish that pathway. And what, what patients should know and what I tell every patient with chronic sinus uh, issues is that surgery is not a cure. Uh, our goal is to restore the normal drainage pathway, but, but patients who are predisposed to getting sinus infections can have uh, kind of a re-scarring or a, a narrowing of that of that uh, alpha tract. And what we do is get them back to a normal baseline, which then is maintained, critically important, maintained with with uh, either kind of nasal flush, nasal steroids, uh, rinses, that type of thing, because uh, the sinus, no matter how big we, we make those holes, can, uh, can re-scar back. And so we're uh, getting people back to a to a baseline that, that then we will continue to follow and maintain going forward. I have a discussion with every patient uh, who comes into my office about uh, chronic sinus issues uh, in terms of finding the right location for them, whether that is in the operating room or whether that is in the office. Not everyone is a, you know, a good candidate for a sinus surgery in the office just based on their anatomy, based on their severity of disease. Uh, patients with a lot of nasal polyps oftentimes are not typically good in-office uh, sinus candidates, but you know that's an individual discussion that I have uh, with every patient about finding kind of the right procedure, you know, should they require it, as well as the right location for that procedure.